Hi, my name is Eric Luella. I'm an environmental specialist at the City of Santa Barbara. I'm also an environmental consultant. Uh, I've been on the board of the Sustainability Project and also sit on the board of Art from Scrap. Uh, I work in the community in a wide variety of environmental issues, uh, mostly focusing on food and energy in the community. Michael Pollan's been in the news quite a bit lately and his often quoted comment uh, regarding the sun's energy and our reliance on it uh, I think has a wonderful correlation right now with our credit crisis and that's uh, that we are borrowing credit from the earth in the sense that we're using fossil fuels, we're using fossil water, we're using resources that have taken millions of years to create and we're using them at a rate where they'll be exhausted maybe in our lifetime or two. And the way we've done agriculture for the last 5,000 years is been largely in reliance on that sun and that natural balance and the way we've done it in the last 50 years has been a radical departure. I think Michael Pollan in large part is referring to the fact that we're going to need to rebalance the way we currently grow food with the way we've grown food in the past. You know often in the discussion of fossil fuels I bring up the discussion of fossil water and a large portion of it is in the United States huge quantities of our agriculture are grown with well water. We often hear well water but what does well water mean? It means digging a hole deep into the ground and pulling up water that's been there for a long period of time. And it's often taken a long period of time to get there. So what we're looking at now is a situation where we've been pulling literally millions of years worth of water, filtering down into the soil, and pulling it back up and using it at a rate thousands of times of which it can refill. And the question of how we're going to grow food in agriculture takes an incredible amount of water to grow when we don't have that water available. So this is the challenge with fossil water and fossil fuel collide. The fertility of our agricultural lands is something that in large part has been, I'd say, missing from the public discussion because we've been able to take synthetic chemicals, fertilizers, and apply them to the land in a way that allows us in the short term to produce in a fashion we never have before. We can produce more food on less land with less people than in any time in the history of humanity. The challenge with that is, is it's been taking things from the soil that we can't replace. All the little, little elements that allow our food to be grown in a healthy way, we have no way of replacing. And now we're facing the challenge of we've depleted the soils that have taken millions of years to create, and we're not quite sure what to do. And this issue of fertility is one that we're going to have to learn and relearn how to reintroduce into our communities. Fossil fuels, and really, to a larger extent, fossil water, are two of the challenges that have been largely missing until the last few years, but now they're at considered a crisis. It's an epidemic uh, that we're facing now as world fuel prices increase. Fertilizer costs are going up hundreds of percent. In the last decade, they're up a thousand percent. The way we've grown food has been largely dependent on two or three different chemical inputs that have allowed us to grow a wide variety of food at a very high rate. Those are now becoming extremely expensive. We're also starting to find that the side effects of using them have had some really, really dastardly effects on our environment. Dead zones in the ocean, sick children, cancer. Those are things we're realizing both are in tandem. The use of those chemicals is dangerous, and we're running out of those chemicals. And we've relied on them for so long, a whole generation of farmers knows nothing other than how to use those, and our society knows how to consume them. So right now, we're faced with an incredible challenge but a positive one because there's a huge resurgence, 20% growth a year in organic agriculture. So we're seeing that there is a way to do it differently, a more traditional approach that can still produce good food and healthy food for our communities. The way we grow food currently right now relies entirely on a transportation system funded and fueled by oil. We import 60 to 70 billion dollars of food in the United States every year from other countries and at the same time the food we grow within the United States comes from far and wide and is brought mostly by rail or by truck to our communities. This is a system that food travels 1500 to 2000 miles. Even in Santa Barbara we grow a lot of our own food. 
much of it is shipped to LA and then brought back even to be eaten by residents here in a supermarket. That system depends on cheap oil and it will have to change and it's going to change. One of the things that's exciting about it is there's a lot of opportunities in that for us to rebuild community around that, building systems that are more resilient. A lot of people have asked me that question of, what did your 100 mile diet go like? How is that? Are you still doing that? I've even been asked, are you crazy? And it's been really kind of fun to engage people in the discussion of what it looks like to eat only food grown within 100 miles of your house. We're lucky in Santa Barbara, we grow an incredible array of food. And I've had to take th some things out, like rice, but I've replaced them with things I find I enjoy even more now. And so it's actually been something I considered a challenge at first, but now it's really a lifestyle, and I don't think of it as a diet. It's something I choose to do because it benefits me and my community. And in a sense, I feel more connected to where I live because I pay attention to the seasons and I pay attention to the kind of crops that go with that. It's been really fun. The slogan, think globally, act locally, I think applies nowhere better than food because it's something we take part in every day, most of us three times a day at least. Uh, the options for globally are purchasing foods that are grown locally. Uh, and looking at the global question of where do we get our food from, we can think about those questions, we can engage in policy, we can read articles and books, especially The Omnivore's Dilemma, which is a wonderful treatise on that. And then act locally is everything we do every day that relates to food, which for most of us is something we really enjoy. And that's one of the great things about that slogan, is that it applies in a way that makes us smile. It's going out and having a meal with friends. It's enjoying a nice dinner that you cook yourself from food grown in your community. In my life, the things that I've been able to do in the last few years to really reduce my impact, both on my community and the environment, have been really enjoyable ones. I'm a regular at farmer's market. I've gotten to know my farmers. They know me. And that's been a huge component of my Tuesdays and even a lot of my Saturdays. I live downtown and we have the market on those days. At the same time, when I go to the supermarket, I try to pick produce that's organic. Organic makes a huge difference in the health of the farmers and the health of our ecosystems. And in the broader picture of things, I support community-supported agriculture, Fairview Gardens out in Kalita, growing food right in the middle of our community. It's really a treasure that we have something like that in our community. And I choose to support them when I'm out that way. And at the same time, it can be something as simple as bringing a bag to the store and filling it with produce instead of processed foods. Those foods can support community growing them here instead of a factory producing food somewhere else and at the same time increasing my health. I think engaging uh, at whatever level a person wants to say, I'm ready for a change in my life related to food. I think there's three different levels they can engage at. And one of them is going where they currently go and just buying healthier choices cooking more, taking a cooking class from you know adult ed at Santa Barbara City College. There are a lot of ways to engage with the food you currently buy in a different way that is more engaging and healthy. If you want to take it to the next level, it can be going into your community and finding food that's grown in your community, say at farmer's market or community supported agriculture, and starting to engage with those farmers and purchasing say half or maybe even all of your vegetables or fruit from local farmers. And if you really want to take it to the level where you're fully engaged, grow some of your own food it's something we did in mass across the United States even just a generation or two ago and in the last 20 years it seems to be a lost art planting just mint plant that you can't kill if you try in your front yard can be a start for tea and then it can branch out into fruits can branch out into vegetables and at the end of the day you might even be serving a meal that you grew yourself most often people uh, see changing their lifestyle as something that will be uh, bringing of n negative consequences. They'll say, I don't want to change. The way things are going for me is just fine. And in the conversations I've had with people, in the lectures I've given, say, start with one thing that sounds interesting. Start with a persimmon that you've never eaten and say, that was really good. And you know what? Maybe I'll talk to that farmer and say, what else do you recommend? Farmer's market. Begin with one step and before you know it, it might be something that doesn't seem like a change. It seems like something you want to do.